football game, right? So I have to go into my old stomping ground, my old building on 57 between 10 and 11, the broadcast center there. Uh, are you in the depths or what floor are you on? Oh, we're in the depths, man. Are we you are downstairs? All in the bottom. You're oh, at the yeah. bottom? Yeah, I know. No, listen, that's okay. I know the whole building. So I, you know, we've done things at every floor. I didn't know if you were going to be upstairs or you are going to be downstairs. You're, you're all the way downstairs. It's interesting. We're in the very bottom. Right. We do the same. I know where you are. Like, I know where you are. Where CBS NFL Today is. No, I know where you are now. I, I know. I, I, I've been. I, I spent many a day in that building. I know. Uh, many, many Mike, a day. You, yes, yes. I've been I'm in excited that beyond feels. belief to have you. It's really cool. But I'm also like, this is a weird week for me too because I've been listening to you since I was a young guy and I grew up listening to you. And this is like kind of hitting right now that you got five shows left after this. It's yes. bugging me out a little bit. And one Sunday, and then five, and then uh, five next week. That's exactly right. All right, let's get you going to the studio this week, right? Yes, I'll be in L.A., the Fox NFL kickoff show, 11 a.m. All right. So, you, oh, so you're on before the regular pregame show. You're yes. on 11 so, to 12. At the 11 a.m. show, we're in studio. The regular pregame show is headed to the Coliseum for Eagles Rams. Like we're doing it on remote, which is actually uh, the right. match of the week. All right, that's good. No, that is good. Well, there's a couple of them. You know, there was last night, and then there was then there's Minnesota, Carolina, and then there's the Rams and Eagles. So let's start with the Minnesota, Carolina. What's your thoughts? Minnesota, Carolina is fascinating because if you did a blind resume test on the two quarterbacks, you would think that Case Keenum was having the year that Cam Newton was supposed to have and, and got the opposite. But suddenly last night's loss throws everything into the mix where the Saints might not have a home field game in the playoffs. The Falcons can suddenly still win the NFC South. And the Panthers, who are limping along here, did not look good against the Jets, did not look good at all against the Saints last week, are suddenly really alive again. So to me, this, this Case Keenum thing, is it a fairy tale? Is it going to really happen? This is the game where, to me, it, you, know, you don't go down across the country into cold weather Play the, play the Panthers outdoors and win that game against that defense unless this is a real-deal team. And I do think the Vikings are a real-deal team. Like I, I, I can't see a flaw in them right now. In Case Keenum's past, whatever you want to say, the president, he's putting up better numbers than anybody, and he's leading a team better than any quarterback in the league. Listen, he's doing very well. Um, now, I think there's still a couple guys that are playing better, but he's playing very well. I mean, he really is. I mean, uh, uh, he's playing really he's way past what – it's almost like a Joe Cap. It's almost like an Earl Morrill kind of year. Carolina's tricky. they got to be careful because they have – Minnesota, then they have mm-hmm. Green Bay, which is going to be with Aaron Rodgers, and yep. then they got Atlanta, at Atlanta to close the season. They might not make the playoffs. No, they might not, and and the tiebreakers don't favor them in any sort of way. Everything favors Atlanta and the tiebreakers, everything. Atlanta, Atlanta's beating Green Bay, Dallas, Detroit, yep. Seattle. Atlanta's yep. got every tiebreaker. Every tiebreaker, every tiebreaker. So they're in very good shape from that standpoint. That was a big, big interception for Atlanta what'd last make, night. What did you make of Sean's stuff yesterday on the sideline? You know, listen, he, listen, I know Sean forever. Okay, I know. Sean has got a bad temper, which we know. And Sean, he's kind of morphed into. He likes to be a little bit like a little Bill. So he's, but he he started at halftime. You see, the play before half, he couldn't get that out of his system the whole second half. Yeah. That play drove him crazy, and it was an enormous play in the game. It it people don't realize how big that play was going into the half because Atlanta had almost thrown the game away because they should have had points. Now here's New Orleans going to have points at the end of the half, and then to lose it on that that was a ru- and he thought it was a bad call, and it really wasn't, but he thought it was a bad call, and he couldn't get out of his system the whole second half. He could not get that call out of his system. I said it might have been the biggest play of the season for the Saints because if they win that game, and okay, you're right, it's all about momentum because they take the points off the board for Atlanta, they yep. go up three. And then they would score another touchdown. Yeah. They would have been up 10 yep. instead of 7. Whole different game. The whole what if. But whole different game. To me, the Saints, I don't see making a big run if they got to go outdoors and go, you know, or go into Minnesota and win a game where they lost week one and all that stuff. But, you know, no one's beating the Saints in New Orleans in a playoff game. Plus, but they got very lose, beat up last night, too. They lost oof, a lot of players. Oof, every, and Kamara, whether he's healthy or not, I mean, how valuable the, the offense is him. That offense could not go without him. No, not now. Not, because let's be honest, half of their offense is screen passes. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, they're living on the screen pass. All right. 
Uh, how about the Rams and Eagles? Enormous game on so many levels. Eagles come off looking a little fraudulent if they drop this game, too, because it just looks like they've been beating up on the a- NFC East. And all of a sudden, it's a whole different deal. This game is so big for them and the Rams. The winner comes out of this game really pounding its chest a- in a big way. It's a very big game. I think this game, I thought last week had big playoff implications and Minnesota won it. I think Rams have ha- this this game has big playoff implications. I think I came on with you two weeks ago and I said the next two weeks for the NFC are like a mini gauntlet. Who's going to survive? And it's interesting with the Eagles. They've beaten one team with a winning record this season, the Carolina Panthers. That's it. That's the only thing. And they beat up on some bad quarterbacks, whether it be C.J. Beathard or it be uh, whatever version of the Bears that came in with Trubisky a couple weeks ago and, you know, the Broncos three-headed monster. This is the game and it's interesting. I said it today. You know, there's there was a bandwagon full of Eagles people, and they were posing for photos on the sideline of the team. They were doing the electric slide. They were feeling themselves. You could have there, – there are, there are tumbleweeds coming through the Eagles bandwagon right now after that loss to Seattle. No one is touching the Eagles. Everyone says they're a fraud. They spent the week out there. They were in yep. Coast Mesa always. I don't know if I love that. They were in the that doesn't kind of bother valley. me one way or the other. The thing I'm going to learn now, though, is that I don't know is I don't know how the coach is going to deal with adversity because we don't know that about him yet. So this is going to be big. This is going to tell me a lot about the two quarterbacks, going to tell me something about the coaches. And from what I've seen this year, I really think the Rams are the most stable outfit, to be honest with you. I, you know what? The Rams won a game that, that is going to go forgotten weeks from now, but they beat the Saints. After that was a big win. Off like that was a very game. big win. I think that did something in the locker room, too. I talked yep. to guys in, in that L.A. organization. They all say the same thing. Winning that game kind of validated themselves to each other. Hey, you know, we lost to the Vikings in Minnesota, but a lot well, of that's why the, the Eagles Vikings. need this game, because it's the same thing. If they drop the two in a row here, it's not going to be easy for them. Even it, it could make next week hard. Even at Giants Stadium next week could be hard. I think that is the trap game of all trap games. The Eagles, whether they win or lose this one, Giants standing in a frenzy and just trying to ruin the Eagles season. But you're right. Do they beat the Rams? Because the, the thing with the Rams, as good as Goff is and as great as the defense is, this Todd Gurley might be the best running back in football, and he will eat the, the Eagles alive if they give him a chance to. So the Rams are home. I don't know if their home field even exists. I don't even no, I don't even think they have one, but they've been very sound this year in all three units, uh, and and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens. This is a critical game. I agree with you. This is a very big game, and I'll give you another one. I went to the Chief Jet game last week, I t- yeah. I, I, and the Chief defense was so bad, I can't I even explain how bad it was. They benched Revis. Peters was an embarrassment. Andy did the right thing, benching him, but they have fallen apart on a week where Kelsey and Hill were killing everybody. I mean, the Jets still got 500 yards of offense. Now they get the Raiders and the Chargers at home. They're in prime time next week against the Chargers. These two games, because Andy Reid salvaged his season right now. Raiders at home, Chiefs at, uh, uh, Chargers at home next week on Saturday night in prime time. That is the two games back-to-back. The Chiefs need both of them. Here's the issue with the Chiefs. When their offense is great, like last week, their defense is atrocious. When the defense is good, like against the Giants, their offense doesn't show up. They haven't had that show up at the same time since about week four. I have no confidence in the Chiefs, home or away. And I have no reason. I don't to have any confidence in the Raiders, run. though, either. Why not? They won a couple games in a row. I don't like. I don't even think they looked good against the Giants last week. They didn't look good, but they won the game, and they're winning games. Uh, and that's the thing: the Raiders. No one's talking about them. They're six and six. Yeah. I don't know. To me, this, this, this Raiders team was talking about house money at this point. They thought their season was done. Suddenly, they're on top of the division, and they're looking at the Chiefs, who are just a wounded animal. I, this, this is to me it's fascinating a game. game. I don't know what to, who do you like in this game. I don't like anybody. I like the Raiders. Okay. I like the Raiders. They beat them once, and I feel like they come in there with a the better quarterback. I think if they Carr do, is, I think the Chiefs are done if they lose this game. And it's crazy, you know. Andy gave up play calling to Nagy, yeah. who is actually a brilliant young well, guy. Well, they, and, and they and they made a million big plays in the game. And I the mean, offense so. was great. Yeah. They still lost. And you like the Peters move? I do too. I got. I got. He a lot had. Of good a, he there. had. A, he had to suspend them. That was ridiculous. What he did. Had. Had. And Revis was worthless. Yeah, he pulled him off the field. He was giving people a fifteen yard cushion. He couldn't guard anybody. He was terrible. What do you make of uh, Gronkowski only getting one game? I'm curious on your thoughts on that. <sighs> I didn't think he'd get to steal a game. Yeah, I didn't think and I didn't think he would get the steal a game. I thought yeah, he only get one game. That says so much to me because people think this thing is all black and white, and it, 
No, the NFL knows that they can't go into play the Pittsburgh Steelers without Rob. No, Gronkowski. it's the biggest game in the it's the biggest game in a regular season. They're not going right. to take going to take Gronkowski out of that game. They're not going to do that. And I don't think they're going to slap Bob Kraft around. I feel like there's a benefit of the doubt on this one. Where all right, we're, we're just the Patriots, and we're not going to throw their season down the line on the, something that was an extracurricular play that he apologized for. I, I don't think so either, and I'm telling you, they do not. They don't want any more. Here's what the NFL doesn't want: they don't want any more controversy. They just want to have some football, and they haven't had any all year. Next week's the biggest regular season game of the season: Pats at Steelers. If they both win this week, then they have the biggest regular season game of the season. They wish it was in prime time because it's protected. It's not. It's at four o'clock, but still, it's going to be an enormous game on the 17th of December. An enormous game. I can't wait. And and there's a game, uh, you know, t- this weekend on Sunday night also for Pittsburgh that is, I can't wait also. I, I did Ravens-Lions last week. No one really watched that game in America. I'll tell you, the ratings weren't probably crazy, but the Ravens... I can't fans, figure out the Ravens this year. They've been so bad at times, fun. you know that? Their defense is flying around, flying around. And, I, you know, Pittsburgh's coming off a very emotional week with Shazier and all the things they went through. They're a very emotional win. I mean, do the Steelers have the edge? Yes, they're home, and they're the better team on paper. But the Ravens are feeling some sort of chemistry right now that that could be an awesome game Sunday night also. And that's the thing with the NFL this this, this last few weeks. As bad as the season's been for everybody, there's great football left to be played, and the playoffs are going to be amazing. Well, listen, if you have good games, it'll be fun. I mean, that's you know, the AFC's two teams. I mean, there's not even a third team to talk about this year. I mean, there really isn't. Uh, But the NFC's loaded. I mean, there's a million teams. Absolutely. I mean, too bad the Rodgers can't get back to the playoffs. I don't think he can. It would be nice if he could. Be fun to have him, but I don't think he'll get there because I just don't. I I I don't think they'll run the table. And even if they did, I think they'll be on the outside. So I. I, It's a a real long shot. They're two games out right now, but. Yeah, but they need the Saints to go bad, too, and it's not going to – I don't think it's going to happen. That's what they need. They yeah. need two of those NFC South. Well, Carolina could go bad. I can see that. And they play Carolina. But the they Saints do. going bad is going to be very difficult for them. Really very use, difficult for them. They could use the Seahawks losing a bunch of games now, too, also. I, I, that's the one they need because that's going to be the hard one is getting the – the one thing about the Seahawks is – their culture is such that they won't fall apart. I mean, no. that, that's just, it's, they've been around too long. They've been through this too long. They will not fall apart as a group. They'll win games that, that they can win, games that they have to win. They'll win enough of them to do their job because that's, that's really who they are. I mean, they're able to do that. Like last week was a perfect example. That's a game they're going to win because that's just who they are. They're going to yep. win those games. They're not great anymore, but they still have enough of a culture that they understand how to win football games when they have to. And, and I think, and, they, and and I think they'll shows. beat Jacksonville this weekend. And That's look, a good game. I think they'll win that one. And they have Dallas and, Ar- and Arizona in their last two games. They have Jacksonville, then they have the Rams at home, and then they play the Cowboys and Arizona. And the Cowboys will probably be out of it, and so will Arizona. So I think you got to like Seattle's chances in those games. So, I mean, Dallas could, could beat them for sure, but I mean, I think that their schedule's conducive to them uh, to get to ten, if they get to ten, they automatically knock uh, them out because they, uh, you know, that, no, they don't. They they could lose to them at ten, but that's if, yeah. they, but that's if Green Bay beats Minnesota, which is not going to be easy to do. No, that's, that's not, not going to yeah, be easy. Not going to be easy. At all. all right, who's your upset this week? Giants. Going with it. I'm, I'm all. I mean, this place is good. Are you going on Sunday? No, I'm no, no. I, I I'm doing the show uh, from. Uh, I'm doing a show on uh, this f- football Sunday show this week in front of like a live audience. So I won't. Oh, I, where? I can't. That cool. at Mulcahy's, that be? It's it's uh, Mulcahy's on Long Island. It's already sold I love out. It. It's, uh, we sold out all the tickets already. So, uh, but uh, so I'm doing one football show uh, on Sundays. We've been planning this, so I'll be there for that. But I'll, I, it'll be fun to watch and it'll be competitive. The Giants will be spirited. I just don't know how many healthy bodies they have. Oh, they're not yeah. a good team on paper, yeah. and there's not the talent on the field. But I feel like this is one of those New York games. Where well, I think. Listen, I think out. Spags is going to have his defense excited, and I think the offense will be pumped up for relay. I do agree with you. I think that will be very emotional. I, I, agree I with deal you. with this probably. One one, one hundredth of what you deal with, but when you walk down the street, do they not just want to tell you things? The fan, right? so you're walking down. The street. It's not everybody. This last two weeks has been like, "Hey, Eli got a raw deal." Go. It's it's a totally different feeling around this Giants team the last two weeks, and I feel like that's going to spill over into. The oh, stadium. I think the Giants could definitely win. I don't think there's any question. I don't think that's outrageous at all. I don't think that's even a, I think a they little put bit an outrageous. The Cowboys season, and that's kind of like the Eli, whether it be farewell song or whatever it is. I'm not saying that's the case. But whatever it is, this is like a cool moment for Eli, and I think they find a way. All right, thanks. I will see you guys uh, on Wednesday morning at at 8 o'clock. 
We cannot wait. Thanks. And Looking forward we will to be it. Very, very honored to have uh, you. Yeah, looking forward to it. Peter Traeger, back after this.